Hi, this is Sandeep Jali, Salman Arain and Manos Perlakis, presenting case 268 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating HDR, or Hydrodynamic Contrast Recanalization, a new technique developed by Mauro Carlino, as well as Salman Arain, for crossing coronary CTOs. The patient was a gentleman with multiple comorbidities and previously placed stents in the circumflex seven and six years prior, presented with angina, was found to have lateral ischemia, and was found to have occlusion of the circumflex stents. This is the coronary angiogram showing a blunt proximal cap and occlusion of the previously placed stents. There is only faint feeling of the obtuse marginal brands, mainly through contralateral collaterals. And this is the coronary CT angiogram that can be very useful, especially in case of poor visualization distally. However, here we see something in the obtuse marginal territory, but the visualization remains fairly poor. We do see that there is a long stand length and uh, long occlusion length. So our plan was to try undergrade. And if that didn't work, consider retrograde through epicardia collaterals, but that was a very high bar because the collaterals were fairly poor and epicardial. We tried to cross using a turnpike and a guy in X2. We did make some progress, but the wire kept on getting stuck within the previous stance, likely because of interaction with the struts of the previous stance. So after several attempts, we stopped and we decided to try a new technique, the HDR, in which the microcaster is advanced a little bit into the occlusion, and then a small amount of contrast is ejected. The purpose of the contrast is to find a way to dissect either into the distal true lumen, this is ideal of course, or sometimes it goes into a side branch, Sometimes the contrast does not cross but stains around in the extravascular space, the extra plug space as shown in this view. Type 2A is when the contrast crosses into the distal true lumen. Type 2B is when it crosses into side branches. So we brought uh, the microcatheter, the turnpike, inside the previously placed stents. And then we took the injection with a small amount of contrast, about 1 cc. We see not really much. There is a little bit of contrast staining inside, maybe going into one of the branches, but nothing major is happening. However, when then we took a, a polymer jacketed wire, the Mongo didn't go, but a Fielder XTR, which is a soft, tapered polymer jacketed guide wire, it nicely tracked along the previously placed circumflex stents, and it seemed to enter into the second obtuse marginal branch. And this is the contralateral injection. And we're seeing here again a lot of uh, tortuosity, but the wire seems to be in that second obtuse marginal branch. Now, we had a lot of work still to do. We could not advance the microcatheter, so we used a, a 7 French liquid guide extension with a Takeru balloon, and then we were eventually able to advance the turnpike LP all the way into the obtuse marginal, and then exchange the Fielder XTR for a workhorse guide wire. Now, the next step was to try to um, localize the origin of the obtuse marginal. We can see here that with contralateral injection, we successfully have crossed into the second obtuse marginal, but we want to optimize the outflow, especially given that this is a diffusely diseased and small vessel. We used the intravascular ultrasound, and uh, we had difficulty localizing the location of the proximal cap of the obtuse marginal branch. There was some calcification. And then uh, we used the dual lumen, didn't work. And then what we decided to do is to actually uh, use a small balloon past uh, the presumed origin of the obtuse marginal branch. So what we did is we inflated a three by eight millimeter balloon just distal to where we thought was the origin of the obtuse marginal. And then uh, we tried with the guy next, which actually knuckled and prolapsed into what seemed to be the first obtuse marginal branch. So now we have a wire in the second wire in the first obtuse marginal branch, 
But even though we did balloon inflation with a small balloon, we didn't have really undergrade flow in that obtuse marginal branch. So we took again a polymer jacket. This is a field XT guide wire, created the knuckle and pushed the knuckle further down. And after doing that, we were able to restore the undergrade flow into the branch. Essentially, what we did is we did the star technique. We were extra plaque and using the star, we were able to cross and restore undergrade flow. After doing that, uh, um, we uh, switched for a microcatheter again and tried to wire into the distal circumflex. So we have outflow from the first obtuse marginal, the second obtuse marginal. We wanted to get some outflow in the distal circumflex. We did again HDR. We tried to put the microcatheter in and advance uh, um, uh, a little contrast, half cc of contrast through the tip. And here, unfortunately, maybe with the previous wires, the, the contrast seems to be staining in a little broader territory than we would like to. However, the contrast did not uh, um, go away. So we have the stain stay in the same place, which is reassuring that we don't have a, fr a free-flowing perforation um, that can lead to tamponade. So we ballooned uh, the two obtuse marginal branches as well as the circumflex. And then uh, this is the result. We do have good flow in OM1, good flow in OM2. The plan is to uh, bring the patient back and do drug-coated balloons. But uh, we decided to leave the distal circumflex uh, since uh, we had this and outflow for the first and second obtuse marginal branch. Several conclusions from this case. The first one is that application of HDR, the hydrodynamic contrast canalization, can be helpful for crossing CTOs. In this particular case, instant CTOs. When you have a balloon or microcaster and crossable lesion, then using a guide extension and a small balloon. The Takeru in this case was successful for allowing equipment delivery more distally. We did use uh, dual injection in IVUS to find the origin of the first obtuse marginal branch. And then uh, when we tried to use uh, wiring and HDR more distally, we had this fixed stain, which uh, we decided to leave alone. The patient did not have tamponade, he did fine. So when we have a contained stain, essentially contain uh, dissection or perforation, leaving it alone is okay, does not necessarily require coiling or other aggressive treatment. Thank you very much.